Bizarre Brain Comics. Hello, comic book friends. This is Gary, your host for Bizarre Brain Comics. This is where I like to take a look at some older comics, talk a little bit about the characters and creators, and then examine the stories and the art. This time, we're more into the fan stuff. And we're going to talk about Hembeck. Yes, Fred Hembeck. I'm just going to take a little look in this book here, Ba Hembeck. This is uh, Hembeck number four from 1980 from Fantico Enterprises. And, and it says, as it says here, the world's goofiest comic book <clears throat> or comic magazine. Now, Fred Hembeck, he was born in 1953, still around. Uh, while I was doing research for this, I f found a very interesting um, interview with him on YouTube from just about a year ago. And that was cool. He's an American cartoonist known for his parodies of mainstream comics and comic characters. His cartoon figures are always drawn with little curly cues at the elbows and knees. I guess uh, uh, he doesn't do the curly cues anymore, but in this, at this era he was doing the curly cues in his elbows and uh, uh, later kept the knobbly, knobby knees and the curly cues in the knees for the most part, but, but not the elbows. And he has been published by the companies whose characters he parodies. He often uses himself in the strips and the stories he draws, as you see right here. Yeah, that visage of Dr. Doom is Fred Hembeck himself. <clears throat> Some of the titles he's used for his comics are Dateline, Squiggle, 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 uh, Dial H for Hembeck. He's done the Fantastic Four Roast. Um, uh, oh yeah, FF Roast Hembeck. Fred Hembeck destroys the Marvel Universe, yeah, and uh, straight out of college, he was unable to get work as a, as a comic artist. But he, de he developed his own unique stylization from illustrated letters he used to send to the letters pages of comics and to his friends. His parody interviews of super characters <clears throat> were published in the Buyer's Guide for Comics Fandom, later the Comics Buyer, Comic Buyer's Guide. And they became a popular feature. The best were published in a, in a book by Eclipse Comics in 79. From 79 to 81, he did a three-panel strip for the Daily Planet page in DC Comics. And from 80 to 83, Fantico published a series of comics uh, featuring his stories. Their stories, sometimes stories is, is very uh, loose description. And he wrote and did uh, layouts for the uh, Fantastic Four Roast number one, which is a one-shot in 82. It was in commemoration of the Fantastic Firsts, Fantastic Four's 20th anniversary. And later in the 80s, he had strips in Marvel Age uh, using Brother Voodoo an awful lot. And he's had work published by many publishers, fan and pro, over the years, including Archie. And until I was looking through some of this older stuff. I didn't think I'd ever seen him do anything for Archie. Well, I still haven't seen him do anything for Archie, but I've seen him do some, some Archie-related stuff.
See, and then here is Bahembek. Is this the face of Dr. Doom? You were expecting maybe the Fred Skull? <laughs> and of course, his parody of of uh, Kirby here, even to his backgrounds, are uh, um, Kirby, are parodies of Kirby, uh, Kirby cityscapes. And I do have a couple others here. The Bride of Hembeck. <laughs> the torch shaking hands with Martian Manhunter. Oh, and that's funny because if you know the Martian Manhunter, um, fire is his kryptonite. And then we have here the Hembeck File. And this is is uh, uh, consists mostly of of uh, some of his uh, tryout work. Uh, um, is very talkative. Just a whole page of like a dozen and a half, a um, couple dozen maybe. I don't know. Uh, headshots of of him talking. Uh, that's <laughs> that's like Harvey uh, uh, Harvey Picar, and some more here. Yeah, a couple, a few of his sample pages. Very good, and he, his figures. This is. Uh, stuff that he did in in earnest and his stuff is is noticeably noticeably stiff uh not bad draftsmanship but you can if you're familiar with his cartoon stuff uh, more cartoonish work you can you can see uh, uh the similarity in the way he does his figures just various various things like that but here we are with Ba Hembeck. <clears throat> the world's goofiest comic magazine. Of course, talk. Because it parodies a lot of uh, Fantastic Four. It's, but what's interesting here? His little tribute to uh, Kurt Swan, his first favorite artist. And at first glance, you think, well, this is a, just a Kurt, uh, Kurt Swan figure, but it's not. This is Hembeck copying a Kurt Swan figure, and he does a lot of that stuff. Um, but what's, what's neat here is it starts right off, it's telling a story. And the, uh, we're seeing this through the, through the reader's eyes, approach this house, goes up to the house, enters, you can see this house, uh, doesn't seem to be anybody there, and then we see this one room, oh my gosh, look, it's full of comics, then out from out of the corner comes Hembeck himself, now he, he did the he is extremely wordy. He got pages worth of of dialogue here. Well, monologue. So it's all monologue. Um, and Hembeck's caricature of himself. And here he's just greeting the person, and then he just starts talking about comics. And the, <laughs> and he doesn't find it. He says, what are you doing here? And then, oh, okay, here, blah blah blah. And he goes to the living room in the house, and he starts talking talking about stuff comics and he gets talking about his early life how he uh, and how he got into to comics and then he starts do it, recounting some of his no bizarro was his into superheroes uh, he had had read some like as a little kid some uh, harvey you know casper and and the like but here he goes and and he starts talking about some of the some of the storylines of the early silver silver age uh, Superman and Jim uh, Jimmy Olsen and Bizarro, really Bizarro stuff, and he just talk, just rehashes stuff. The tales of the Bizarro world, his own feature, and here he shows uh, different versions of Bizarro from various different uh, artists, and he goes on and talks about uh, some stuff from from Jimmy Ol Olsen uh, house ads. I really like the house ads and uh, Jimmy Olsen. Um, and stuff, and some stories about Jimmy Olsen and drag that they had back then. 
That's kind of funny. And, and it rehashes certain elements from the story. And get... Here. Here's his version of Superman. And more talking heads. And then he gets on to talking about the Flash. And here for the center spread. Double page spread. Where he recreates... Illustrations from a bunch of... Carmine Infantino flash covers and panels. Big thing, big thing. And he goes on and on. It got, and it gets so wordy. And, and his, his lettering is so small, even though this is a, an oversized, magazine-sized uh, comic, it's so small, it's difficult to read. So, and here it gets even wordier. Here he's talking about Fantastic Four, and he gets into relating a story of Fantastic Four with uh, um, the Submariner and how he tricked <laughs> the Fantastic Four when they went broke, claiming to be a movie mogul, which he was because he had he was wealthy, became a movie mogul, and had a Fantastic Four movie. And there, and then here we get into. Doctor Doom and he, how he was the world's greatest escape artist because he always got away at the at the end somehow managed to get away when after he, being defeated and relying on luck and some of the weird ways he got out of out of it and then oh, gee, look look at the size of that lettering look 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 itty bitty can barely read it at all. And then it, here he talked about the uh, the evolution of the appearance of the Fantastic Four characters by Kirby through the years until they resulted in this version of Kirby's Fantastic Four. Then here, oh jeez, a pages worth, pages worth of all this text. It, he could probably take hours reading that. <laughs> and then he com concludes this issue with back when he's talking. And then he says, well, I got to I gotta get to drawing now. Uh, you'll have to leave. By the way, you didn't tell me your name. And he goes, oh, turns out he bored the reader to death. And says, geez, what am I going to do? I've never had a dead body before in my house before. Must be some way of getting rid of the dead body. So he breaks out, Tales from the Crypt. <laughs> To find out how to get rid of a dead body. Oh, that's funny. And here he is on the inside cover. A little illustration of himself. A Bizarro Hembeck. I don't know if you can see that very well. A yeah, Bizarro Hembeck. And then some more Superman parodying from a Superman cover from way back when. Oh, and that's all I've got for Fred Hembeck this time this time and I hope you enjoyed that if you have never come across Hembeck he is a pleasure it's it's funny to read if you're if you're a comics fan uh, and it is specifically for comics fans but it's not for you if you take your comic books and your superheroes too seriously he seemed to be more interested in uh, the the Silver and Bronze Age, which is when he was uh, growing up. And uh, in his interview, I saw yesterday, he kind of, for the most part, stopped reading new comics around 1990 when his when his daughter was born. And I think he said daughter. Anyway, when his child was born. And uh, he had other things to, to deal with. And when he does, even though he was getting packages of uh, uh comp packages of comics in the mail uh, he seldom got a chance to read them and when he does read comics he would mostly be reading older stuff so I can under appreciate that and I don't get to get the uh, comp comics I have to pay for them and they're just so so expensive I can I very rarely buy new comics and you can't just can't keep up with them but that's okay and thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoy, uh, enjoyed it. your introduction to Fred Hembeck. Share him with other comic book fans. And 
like, share, and subscribe. And remember, comics are art.